Hello everyone, this is Dragonlord, and welcome to episode 33 of How to Build Hogwarts in Minecraft. And today, we will be building the wooden bridge, which is highly requested by you guys in the comments. But first, I've noticed I've been getting quite a lot of frame drops in my Hogwarts world. And of course, it is a usual suspect, Google Chrome eating all of my RAM. And that is likely a similar issue for you if you're using a browser whilst watching my tutorials. And so I downloaded the Opera GX browser and using its inbuilt CPU and RAM limiters, I can increase the Minecraft performance. And look, it has built-in picture-in-picture, meaning you can overlay it onto your Minecraft world whilst watching my tutorial. That is so useful. As well as this, you can customize a browser like no other browser. We can use our own custom images and also we can get more wallpapers and use a live wallpaper. I really like the Minecraft wallpaper and it just looks really, really pleasant in the background. And it gets better. We have music integration into the browser itself, and so you can use any of your favorite music platforms within the browser itself. And so give it a download using the link in the description, and you can also check out Opera GX's brand new Minecraft server, which they have just launched, which holds mini games such as Jewels and the Bridges, as well as an SMP server. Thank you so much to Opera GX browser for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check out the link in the description to download the browser today. Anyways, and on with the video, one thing I noticed in my previous tutorials is I actually gave a quick overview of the history of the locations in Hogwarts. The reason I haven't really done this in my last few tutorials is, well, the greenhouses, for example, they have kind of stayed the same for all of the films. However, the wooden bridge, it has changed quite a bit. And so if you don't know, in the first two films, there actually was no landscaping or wooden bridge at the back of Hogwarts. There used to be the center quad tower, which is where the Hostel Wing Tower exists today. However, with the third film focusing on the back end of the castle, the wooden bridge was introduced. And this added the clock tower, the wooden bridge, and the new location of Hagrid's hut towards the back of the castle. Its design remains relatively unchanged throughout the films until the Deathly Hallows, when for some reason, it is just lengthened. I'm not really sure why, perhaps it's just to make the explosion much more grand when Neville blows it up in the Battle of Hogwarts. But its overall design remains basically the same, except it's just a bit longer. So there you go, you now know a little bit more about the wooden bridge, and without further ado, let's get straight into building. And so the wooden bridge has an extremely simple design, it is just the same repeating pattern going all the way down its length of the repeating segments. It does undulate a bit, going up and down, because after all, it is meant to be a bit of a rickety bridge, and so it will be quite a lot of repetitive building, but it does look really grand and provides a really nice angle of the clock tower. And so the first thing we're going to do is to come to these cobblestone blocks right here and come out seven more blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. And this is going to be the floor of the main bridge area. And then just remove these sandstone blocks because they are now going to be in the way of the wooden bridge. And then we'll place in a stripped spruce wood block right here and then make sure it is orienting upwards like this and then build up six more blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then do the same thing on this side as well. So one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then beep it off with another line of spruce logs in between. And then a line of spruce slabs along here, along the oak planks, with a line of spruce planks on top. And with that done, we can now work on the inner area. And so using a spruce fence, place in two here, two here, and then two here, and then place in an upside down spruce there here, one here, and then an oak plank block right there, and then with an oak slab in between, just like this. And then of course, all we need to do is to add on the roof section, and so build in a line of stone brick stairs going all the way along this wooden beam here, and then place in another line of stone bricks on top. And we'll just continue this pattern going all the way up until we're in the center of the build. So another line right here, and they go on the inside, and build in a line of upside down ones here, and then another line of spruce bricks right there and then another line of stone brick stairs, just like this. And then we're in the center, we'll place in a line of stone bricks here, just like this, and then another line on top. And there we go, that is one half of the first section. Of course, it is symmetrical, so we can just start repeating the same thing onto the other side. So once again, one block here, and then six blocks up. One, two, three, four, five, six. The same thing here, one block, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, with a beam to cap it off right in the middle. And then a line of spruce slabs with a line of spruce planks on top. And then the two fences, one here, one in the middle, and one on the left, with an upside down stair. It's there, a block, and then a slab in the middle of each gap. And then the same roof, so a line of stone brick stairs, and then a line of stone brick bricks, and then a line of stone brick stairs on top, with some upside down ones on the inside. And then a final line of stone bricks with another line of stone brick stairs. And there we go. That is the first section 
of the bridge now done. Of course, it does extend down the cliffside into the landscaping, and so let's work on that right now. And so what we'll do is we'll come down another six blocks with our stripped spruce wood. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then build a beam going across just like this. And then what we need to do is to build in the X pattern in the center. And so come in and place in a block right here, and then a fence right here, and then place in two stairs going up with a fence block in the middle, and then two more spruce stairs going up with a spruce block in the middle. And then the same thing, but upside down. So an upside down spruce stair coming down with a fence right there, and then another upside down spruce stair right there. And then the same thing on here, so an upside down spruce stair with another upside down spruce stair with a fence in the middle. And there we go, that is our X pattern. And then all we need to do is repeat the same thing onto the other side. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six. The same thing here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then a wooden beam in the middle. And then one fence here, one fence here, and then two spruce stairs going up on either side with a spruce fence in the middle. And then a spruce plank here, and then two spruce fences right here with the upside down spruce stairs coming down. And then once again, with the spruce fence in the middle. And there we go, that is the pattern going along. And if you do want to add in some lighting in the middle, what I recommend is placing a spruce stair here with a spruce plank there, and then another stair here with a lantern hanging down. Just add some lighting into your bridge. And so before we start extending this down, let's go ahead and build out the extension of the bridge going all the way down. And so there are 16 repeating sections going all the way along my length of the bridge, with this one as a starting height. However, of course, it does undulate as it goes along. And so my plan is, because they're all identical, is I'm going to map out the layout of the heights of all of them going along, and then you guys can go ahead and repeat the same design along every single repeating pattern. And so the next two basically are going to be one block lower, so build five blocks out, one, two, three, four, five, and of course we'll have another spruce pillar in this block right here, and then another five along, so one, two, three, four, five, and then once again we have another spruce block right there for the another pillar. The next section is one block up, so build up one, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then there's another section which is also another block up, so there we go, another block here for the pillar, and then one block up again, and then another two more sections, so one, two, three, four, five, and then another pillar, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then your final pillar right there. And then we'll come down one block, and then two more sections, so one, two, three, four, five, and then a block, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then another pillar. And then again, we'll come down one more block, so one block here, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then another pillar, and then one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll come up a block, so one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll come back down another block, so just like this, one, two, three, four, five, and then down one more, so one, two, three, four, five, is anyone else getting a glitch where the 1.18 blocks take like a certain amount of time randomly to appear? It's happening quite a lot for me. And honestly, it's making this recording really annoying because every time it happens, I am restarting the section where it disappeared. I don't know. Is that just me? Let me know down in the comment section. And then we'll add another section to here. So one, two, three, four, five. And then our final two sections are one block up. So one, two, three, four, five, a pillar and then one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there we go. Why does that always happen? That is so, so weird. And then our final pillar. And so this is the layout, and hopefully there are 16 sections. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And so now, and so now that you have this layout, what you can do is basically repeat this section right here onto the remaining 15 sections. And why not? Let's time lapse it. Let's get straight into it. And there we go, that is a bridge repeated into all 16 sections. Hopefully time-lapse did provide some information about how I approach each segment, but basically each one 
is its own individual section as it goes along. Basically, I've given priority to the left pillar to be the same height as this current section, and as you see, the right one is the same height as the section on the right. Hopefully that makes sense. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much because after all, it is meant to be a wonky bridge, and so the wonkier it is, to be honest, the more accurate it is. And one thing you'll notice is that it is quite a sharp drop between these sections along the bridge, and therefore what we're going to do is we're just going to use some stone brick slabs and some oak slabs to just make this drop a little bit more subtle in between these gaps. And what I recommend is replacing these stair blocks with the standard stone brick block just to make it kind of smoothly join between each section. And it definitely does improve it. If you compare this area to this area, it definitely does look a lot nicer. And so you can go ahead and do that. And then one thing you can also do is within the bridge is just add in some oak slabs in between all of the different sections at different heights, just to make it a little bit more smooth as you travel along the length of the bridge. And to make it extra smooth, you can place these stair blocks right here with some stone brick slabs. Unfortunately, you can't remove this one because of the pillar behind it. However, it definitely does increase the smoothness of the bridge overall. And so you can do that along the length of the bridge just to smoothen it all out. And there we go, the bridge is looking a lot smoother with those additions along the length of it. And then the next thing to do it's just adding all of these sections going down, and then that is the bridge completed. And I have just noticed I've built this all one block too low. I have no idea how that happened. So let me just go ahead and fix that by moving this area one block upwards. Okay, there we go. That is now the correct height. Apologies if that caused any confusion. And so basically this bridge has a pattern where it kind of goes up and then flat and then down again. And so the flat area is going to be these three sections right here. They aren't exactly in the middle because the bridge is 16 sections long in my design. However, due to the landscape and kind of being a bit more shallower on this side, what I've done is made this the middle, which is kind of the center area above the kind of valley that goes all the way down. You can go ahead and check out episodes 27 and 28, which are my landscaping tutorials. And so with that in mind, these three sections are the middle section, and then we'll step down one, two, three, and then four, and then it remains that height going along this way, and then the same thing on this side, so it goes down one more, two more, three more, and then four more, and that continues all the way. I hope that made sense. I think, honestly, the easy thing for me to do is to kind of just build it and then show you guys what it looks like as the final result, because all we're doing, basically, is just repeating these X patterns down towards the floor in a certain pattern that goes like this, up, and then back down. So let me go ahead and build that, and then I'll show you guys the final result. And so there we go, that is the completed design. And so as mentioned, we have the three flat sections in the middle, and that just steps down one section at a time, all the way down. And then we have three at the end, which are the same height. And this is basically the bottom of the valley along here. And then the same thing on this side, it just steps down one by one, and then we have four at the end, just there. And so all you need to do basically is just repeat this X pattern all the way down into all of these sections, which are the exact same design. So five by five area with the cross in, surrounded by all of these strip logs on either side. And so that's basically what you need to do. And then once you have done that, what we can do is we can come to this block right here, place in a spruce stair, and then grab a spruce fence. And basically what we're going to do is we can go ahead and go all the way down this length of the bridge, going all the way down in diagonal, all the way down to that block there. So just repeating this pattern, of an alternating spruce there and a spruce fence going all the way down just like this. And if this does happen, then just ignore this block and continue going as if it kind of just attaches into this area because that is just kind of the architecture of the bridge and so it doesn't really matter too much. And so just continue the sound all the way until you reach that block down there. However, in this case here, where there's a block in the way of where a stair should be, I'd recommend removing this block and replacing it with a stair just like this. So it just continues a kind of smooth line going all the way along to the middle. And then replace this final block here with another stair of its own. And there we go, that is that one side done. And then all we need to do is repeat the same thing onto the other side. However, this time what I recommend is starting off on this block right here. It's so placing in a fence instantly and then placing in a spruce stair right there. And the reason is because of the shape of the bridge. If we start on this block, it'll basically go down all the way and not actually hit any of those points, making it seem like a pretty useless support beam. However, on this side, as you can see, it does clash, and that is sort of the point of it being a support beam. And so go ahead and start on this block right here, and then go across all the way down, just along in the same repeating pattern, 
as we did on the other side. And there we go, there are those two toggle beams now added in. And then finally, there are some roof details along the top of the roof. And so come to this middle section right here and come to the top of the roof and place in three spruce blocks going up. So one, two, three, and then replace these blocks here with some spruce planks. And then the same thing on this side as well. And then a layer of stone bricks and then a layer of stone brick slabs going all the way around just like this. And then some stairs. And then a stone brick with a stone brick. And then with a stone brick wall to cap it off. And there we go. There is that glitch I was talking about earlier. That is really annoying and it's really, really weird. Please let me know down in the comment section if you guys are getting this glitch as well. And then there are also some sort of dormer windows in the roof as you go along. And so there is one in the center. And so what you can do is go ahead and remove these two blocks right here and just break a hole into the bridge. You might have to remove the lantern, which was originally here. And then place in a stone brick wall other side, and then simply just a stone brick set here, a stone brick set here, and then two slabs to cap it off just like that. And that will go in just there. And then we'll skip three sections and we'll build in a, another one right here. So once again, breaking in these two blocks here and just breaking apart the lantern that is there. And it's fine, we're now providing some natural light as well. And then once again, the two walls with the two stairs other side and then the slabs to cap it off. And then the same thing, on the other side, skipping these one, two, three sections, and then building on this section right here. And then once again, the two walls, the two stairs, and then two slabs to cap it off, just like that. And so there you go, there is one side of the wooden bridge now complete, and all we need to do now is to repeat the same thing onto the other side. And yep, it is a lot of better building, and so if you have water edit or are skilled with clone commands, I would highly, highly recommend using those to ease up the process. And of course, as usual, a like and a subscribe would be hugely appreciated. And there we go, that is the wooden bridge now complete. Then all we need to do now is to add on the gatehouse at the end. And so what we will do is we'll come to this block right here and build out one, two, three, four, five, but then come out one block on either side as well. And then extend this out seven more blocks in this direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, just like this. And then build up five more blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, and continue that to build the walls of the gatehouse. So, so along this edge here, and then this edge right here. And then using some sandstone stairs, come out with some upside down stairs just like this, and then build another layer of blocks on top, just like that. And then place in a wall here with a block, and then a sandstone stair, and then a block with another block, and then a sandstone stair, and then a block, a block, a sandstone stair, and then two more blocks, and then a sandstone stair here, and then two more to wrap around, just like that. And then we'll repeat the same thing onto the other side. So once again, a wall, a block, a stair, and then two blocks, and then a stair, and then two blocks, and then a stair, and then two blocks, and then once again, a sandstone wall here, and then two sandstone walls in this area right here. And then in between, all we need to do is just add in all of these stone bricks. And so along this edge right here, we'll place in a line of stone brick slabs, and then a line of stone brick blocks with stone brick slabs on top, and then a line of two tall stone brick blocks going all the way along, and then another line of stone bricks with a line of stone brick slabs on top. So basically, a one and a half block gradient along each edge, except this one right here, which has a small lip that goes along like this. And then once again, just a line of two tall stone bricks just here. And then to cap it off, a line of stone brick walls at the top. And there we go, that is that roof area now complete. And all we need to do now is just flip it onto the other side. And then once you've done that, we can then fill in this front face of the gatehouse right here, leaving in a three block wide gap in the middle, which is five blocks tall and then fill in the top section right here. And then right here, we can just simply fill in some smooth sandstone stairs to make a rounded entrance area. And then we will wrap around a line of sandstone stairs going all the way around the edge of this gatehouse, going all the way down here, and then all the way down the other side as well, just like this. And then another line of stairs wrapping around just under there. just like this.
And so there we go, that will conclude today's tutorial episode. If you did get stuck at any point, then do feel free to join my Discord server and help will be provided in there. And so please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really does support the channel. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next video. See ya!